Fantastic. Well, hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to coaching session number five. Uh, this has really been uh, moving in the right direction. We've been laying the foundation uh, for you, and you folks have been uh, with us every step of the way. I want to congratulate all of you guys uh, for taking the action and getting going on this. And um, and many of you uh, in the um, in in the uh, contact with me on the um, on the emails uh, have really given me some very very good questions, uh, and I would encourage you to do more because it's part of the it's part of the product, it's part of our agreement. Uh, we want to uh, answer your questions and then bring you to the point where uh, you are financially successful uh, doing uh, doing tax liens. Uh, so again, congratulations to all of you. And uh, really, really uh, kudos to uh, those of you who have uh, really stepped up uh, to ask the coaching questions because it's all about uh, being coached. I have coaches uh, in uh, for myself personally. I have uh, coaches that help me uh, in my own personal development. Uh, I have other coaches uh, that help me uh, in my physical development. Uh, and uh, I have uh, coaches also that have helped me in my financial development as well. So uh, it, you know, it's uh, for me. Uh, it, it, that's the that's the triangle, and then there's the fourth piece, which is uh, spiritual, of course. Uh, and I've got coaches in that as well. So it's so important uh, to uh, find somebody that's getting the results that you want, and then uh, following uh, their lead. And uh, whenever you get a chance to uh, you know work with somebody. And it's uh, this kind of give and take, whether questions and answers. Uh, uh, just, just, just keep sending them in. Uh, I'll keep answering them. It's so important. Uh, the support is so important uh, uh, for you guys as well. Uh, and this is really near and dear to my heart. It's not just a, a product that we have, and it's not just that. I mean, this is really a, a mission uh, that I have, and the mission is is to uh, create long-term wealth to help individuals and families to create long-term wealth that is stable, meaning when I say stable, that's if they lose their job, they still have the long-term wealth. Uh, they lose their health, they still have their long-term wealth. Uh, and at the same time, that they can begin this, they can do this uh, once they begin by not adding any more money to their principal. You saw those huge returns, you know, what we wind up getting when we when we're investing uh, at uh, five thousand dollars at sixteen percent in uh, Arizona, or five thousand uh, dollars when we're investing at eighteen percent in uh, New Jersey uh, uh, or in Florida, uh, and also if we invest five thousand uh, dollars and invest um, at at uh, twenty five percent in Texas or fifty percent in Texas, which is de facto fifty percent. Uh, which, it, because we're talking about a, a six-month redemption, if it's a, um, a non-homestead property, uh, these are huge returns. Uh, these are stable; they're guaranteed, uh, and you you just have to learn how to to do the business. Now, we've been setting uh, setting the pace; we've been on pace with it. The questions have been really good; they've been very pointed. They're all about doing the business, uh, and you know the idea is you know to keep doubling your money, right? Uh, we remember that you know in uh, you know, at 4% uh, interest, uh, you're going to double your money in 18 years, right? If you got a consistent 4% return, um, if you put uh, $10,000 into something at 4% uh, at four in 18 years, you would you would have $20,000, right? If you put $10,000 into something uh, at uh, at 16% in 4.5 years, you'd have $20,000. So you know, just understand what happens. Of course, you know this is this is how long it takes to double your money, right? At 18%, it takes four years to double your money. At 25%, it takes only 2.8 years uh, to double your money, right? And uh, you know, and at 50%, of course, we know it's going to wind up being a, a year. So here, here you have this, you know, this uh, scenario where we're able to get these huge returns and we have very low risk as long as we've done our due diligence, right? We've got to do our due diligence. So that's so important. And as we move through uh, coaching session five, uh, we're going to begin to implement, and that's what the, the next portion of this is going to be about, right, is at the end of the redemption period. Well, in order to get to the end of the redemption period, we've got to buy a lien. Right, because otherwise, you know, the redemption periods are going to be around, but they won't mean anything to us because we don't have that financial instrument. Right, number one, you have to buy a lien. Right, so understand that. So this is this what we're talking about here tonight. 
uh, we'll review a little bit and and then uh, what we want is to really get you guys up and running and uh, you know and have you starting to do the business does that make sense I hear a resounding yes All right so uh, you know we we talk about the benefits of tax lien investing well we know what the benefits of tax lien uh, investing uh, are we know that the benefits of tax lien investing are the high high returns these high rates of return at the same time the lowest risk right we understand that we understand the types of companies with the banks that are doing that because they're in there doing that financial arbitrage they're using your CD money we know that right when somebody buys a five-year CD what the banks are doing is they're grabbing that money and they're going out and they're buying tax liens with that money and the bank is taking you know making 16 percent and 18 percent 24 and 25 percent on that money why are they doing that because it's a safe investment and they've they so they're giving somebody a pittance Right in the um, in the interest that's on the CD, and they're just laying it into the tax liens. So those are the big players. That's what they do. So we understand uh, that those are the benefits. Right, the benefits are huge returns and very low risk. And at the same time, this is a wonderful way to build our own retirement nest egg, our own legacy, if you will, so that that it just keeps growing and growing and growing for ourselves and for our families. Right, our children, our grandchildren. And then our grandchildren's children. You know, this is so, so, so important, right? And we understand then the tax liens versus the tax deeds, what the differences are, right? We know that a, you know, a tax lien is a financial instrument, right? We know that a financial instrument, uh, it is not the property, you're not buying the property, so it's a financial instrument and, um, and it is um, guaranteed by the property. Is guaranteed by the real estate. That's why it's so important to understand uh, the the real estate piece that you know about the real estate that the tax lien is on, right? So so we've we've talked about that. I think that that I certainly have uh, drummed that uh, into everybody's head enough that that's where the safety is, right? The safety is in knowing that property and then working that spread, right? So now that's on the tax liens and the tax deeds. You're buying when I say deed, straight deed. Meaning you're actually buying the property, the physical property, right off the bat, right? And then then there's a redemption deed, right? And so that's you know that's in a couple of states. That's you know and and so you know Florida, uh, not Florida, I'm sorry, but uh, Texas uh, is a redemption deed state as well as Georgia. Um, and it's funny because I mentioned Florida because I do Georgia and Florida, right? And Georgia borders Florida, and it's 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 really interesting right up along and you get on the Panhandle and you get into Georgia. Uh, you know the the difference in the environment in the um, uh, you know between the uh, between the the redemption deed states uh, and the you know and the deed states and we know that Florida does both uh, liens and Florida also does deeds right and that uh, Georgia does redemption deeds and the redemption deeds uh, like in Georgia and Texas they look act feel smell right they do all the things they have the same characteristics uh, as a tax lien meaning it's a financial instrument. Uh, really, that uh, that's throwing off an interest rate. So, so we have these pieces. These are the these are the nuances. The, these are the differences. Um, and you know, what do what do we want to do, right? What we want to do is is know uh, that we have a a, a property uh, that's a good property with a tax lien on it. We want to make sure that we buy a tax lien against a very substantial, a very good property because that's our that's our protection. Now, we did we did also mention uh, something, and that was that um, the investment to value the ITV ratio, right? Um, and that's so important, right? That you that we work that, and I'm saying that now uh, because we're going to have specific action steps at the end of this. You guys are going to go out and take action. This is where we're at right now, right? We're starting, right? We've built the foundation, and now it's you know little by little. And now it's getting time, right? It's you know you're you know sort of getting close to the edge, right? And, and it's time for the the birds to fly, right? So so when I say the birds to fly, it's time for you to begin to grow the wings, spread the wings a little bit, and start to do something in this, right? Not just you know listen to me on the coaching calls and ask me the questions. That's so important, right? But the questions are going to get better as you take action toward actually doing this right that's the that's the whole point so we, re we remember the um, investment to value ratio uh, and we remember that you know it's you know anywhere from one to two right uh, but highest five percent meaning 
um, as an example, uh, that if you were going to buy a two thousand dollar tax lien, but the um, the least valued property that you would want to buy a tax lien on, right, at two thousand dollars would be a forty thousand dollar property, right? That's five percent, right? Because um, two thousand dollars is five percent of forty thousand dollars. Right, so we understand how that works, uh, and then you know right there in the sweet spot would be you know buying a two thousand dollar tax lien against a one hundred thousand uh, dollar property. So and what we're doing by that is we're insuring um, what we're we're securing ourselves and insuring uh, against you know a property that's gone down in value or that kind of thing. Uh, at the same time, we know that that's a huge spread: two thousand dollars and a hundred thousand dollars. Any day that you get an asset that's worth a hundred thousand dollars for two grand, that's a darn good day, All right? So that's the point. And then of course, uh, we, you know, we can we look at one percent, and that would be a two thousand dollar lien against a uh, two hundred thousand dollar property. And we we know what we're talking about, right? We know that you know that even when we're talking about this kind of return, even at the 5% level, we're talking about a 2,000% return on investment, right? That if you put up a $2,000 $2, to buy a $40,000 lien and um, and it doesn't redeem and you wind up uh, foreclosing on that property and you get that property, you wind up with a 2,000% return. Uh, if indeed it's the $2,000 uh, against the $100,000 property, uh, which is a 2% a, a ITV, uh, you wind up with a 5,000% return, and then um, just arithmetically, when you you get down to the $200,000 property, or get up to the $200,000 property, and you buy a property, um, you buy a lien uh, for $2,000 against a $200,000 piece of real estate. Uh, that's you know that's a you know as I said, it's a 1% ITV ratio, uh, and that's going to have a 10,000% return, right? It's $2,000 against the the um, you know the the two hundred thousand so that's huge right so just understand that's huge in terms of your profit potential but what I need you to look at first okay especially right before you begin to go out into the field uh, what I need you to look at is you know what's going to protect you right because you're hearing these things now and you're all safe because we're all together but you know pretty soon you know we're going to get you know, we're going to go out there and we're going to do some things i know some of you have already uh, done some things you've already been moving and i commend you for that the idea is to you know really begin the process because that's where the rubber meets the road you have to find out you know the you have to find out about the counties that are close to you uh, what the what the rules are you've got to get your hands on the list you've got to find out where the sales are you have to find out all that information and it's really time to to get that information and really begin to take action on it, right? So we understand um, uh, that both liens and deeds uh, create uh, a really uh, create very very strong financial rewards for an investor, right? And so and we understand what the risk is with these. The biggest risk is when people have not done their due diligence on the properties. The biggest risk is when people have not done their due diligence on the properties. So I'm a very conservative investor. I make sure that I know about the properties that I'm going to buy liens on, right? So I know the values of those properties. So you're going to make sure that you run those values and then you're going to work the spreads. You run the values and then you work the spreads, those ITV spreads, right? That's, that's where it's at. So that's where your safety is and that's where your profit is. So just understand that you know as we as we go forward. We also talked about the bidding process, uh, bidding down. And when we bid down, we bid down the interest rate, right? That's the bid down. The piece that's bid down is the interest rate. And so when the interest rate gets bid down, and usually by um, a quarter percent uh, increments. Let's say it starts at 18%, right? So it's 18, then 17 and three quarter, then 17 and a half, right? Then 17 and one quarter, then 17, and then 16 and three quarter, and then 16 and a half, right? And so on and so forth. That's bidding down the interest rate. We're not bidding down the face value of the lien, right? When we talk about premium bidding, which is the other side of things, right? The, so the interest rate gets bid down, 
and then the the uh, face amount right of the lien right gets bid up. There's a premium amount, right? So what happens is that gets bid up, and sometimes that's in one hundred dollar increments or what have you, right? It could be also it could be fifty dollar increments, it could be two hundred dollar increments, and it could be something that's done on an increasing bid basis, right? I've seen those and I've called those sales as, uh, myself in my career as an auctioneer. So just understand what we're talking about. If the interest rate gets bid down and then the tax lien itself can get bid up. And we understand that the interest rate can go down to zero and that's when the bidding up would take place. Right? So and the only reason why we would bid up, we'd only bid up if we knew, right, or if we thought that we had a pretty good chance of getting that property because we're going to get all of our money back, right, uh, uh, with interest. But if it's bid down to zero, there is no interest, right? So the safety uh, is in the fact that we get all of our principal back. But understand that each time at the county, you have to ask, right, do I get my premium money back or do I get interest on my premium money, right? What is it? Do I get my premium money back? Is there a penalty? That, that I can get on the premium money that I get paid on. These are all questions that you have to ask at the county level, right? So, so this is what happens because the, the rules are a little different uh, in every place. Right? Just understand, though, that the, 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 the basic context of everything is the same, but the rules uh, played out a little differently. So you've got to ask those questions. You have to ask questions and ask questions and ask more questions of the counties that you're interested in. You have to know it inside out before you put your hand up, right, to start bidding. So you must you must must ask those questions. So this is these are the things that we discussed, right, in the um, in the last session, in the last coaching session. You want to make sure, right, that you have everything organized. When I say organized. When you're buying your certificates, I mean this is this is one of the this is a cert chart, a certificate chart, or as we call it in the business, a cert C E R T chart for short. But we want to make sure that you have this for all of your liens. And uh, what I said, uh, what I suggested, and I'll tell you what uh, what I've done in red, right on the side. See, we have here is this tax lien number, right? The state and the county. The property address, the rate of return, right? The interest rate, the investment amount, right? That's the right. That's the uh, amount of the lien. That's what you paid for that tax lien, and the date that you purchased the tax lien, right? But then, in addition, what I want you to do is to make a uh, red column on the right over here, right? And put redemption period, redemption period, R E D, red, redemption period, and I like to use red because it's a red letter day for me at the end of the redemption period. It'll be a red letter day for you at the end, at the end of the redemption period as well because that's when one of two things are going to happen. Either number one, you're going to get all of your principal back plus the interest or uh, what's going to happen is you're going to get the property, right? You'll be in line to foreclose on the property. That's huge. So um, make another column. Make it in red so that you have the redemption period and that you know what the date of redemption is. So you have, you've got the purchase date and the date of, uh, date of redemption. So you have all these pieces, and that's, that's your responsibility to take charge of, right? So you want to make sure that you're tracking your purchases. So important. So important, right? Now, what happens? Right? What's the inevitability, right? What are your options when the redemption period expires? Well, the redemption period expires, and so there are really two things here. Let's say, right, let's say it redeemed, meaning that the taxpayer actually uh, paid. If the taxpayer paid, uh, that's no big deal. The, what's going to happen then is the county, you, you know, you'll contact the county. Uh, the, co the county will, uh, will pay you. They will pay you. They'll give you all of your principal back plus the interest. That's what happens. No big deal. Uh, and, you know, that's done. Done deal. But if the redemption period expires and uh, no one, meaning no one, uh, the uh, taxpayer or any other interested party uh, has not uh, paid the taxes, uh, well, you know, then, then you've got, you know, you've got a couple of, you know, you've got a couple of options, right? Uh, one, um, one option uh, is to sell the lien, right? You can assign the lien. 
you can sell the lien to another investor. I buy lien assignments. There are other uh, tax lien investors that buy lien assignments. I mean, you can find some folks that may buy lien assignments at the sales. You can ask them, you know, when you go down to the sale, when you go down to the county. If I have a lien that's, you know, at the end of the redemption period, uh, and, uh, you know, would, would you buy that lien for me, uh, you know, knowing that the inevitability is that we're going to foreclose on that property. Some will, some won't. Some do, some don't. Right. So I that for me that's a wonderful investment. You know I love doing that. That means I don't have to wait out a redemption period on something as long as the person that's assigning that to me right is going to uh, be reasonable and not look to you know make all of the money on it just because they held it for that period of time. If they held it for that period of time and then they're willing to go through the foreclosure process, well then they don't need me, right? Then they're going to take the property and they can sell at half price. The reality, uh, anybody you know that's you know that's well financed really doesn't need uh, need somebody to assign something to. They really don't need that need that person uh, because uh, they have you know they have the money and they're investing and it's not like they need any emergency money. Typically, people that will assign something uh, came up. There's an some kind of emergency comes up a medical emergency, a family emergency, some kind of financial debacle that's taken place in that person's life, some sort of major negative condition change, right, where they they're waiting out a redemption period and this is a safe investment, but now they need to get their hands on cash quickly, right? Something happens, right? Um, whatever. You know, a spouse gets sick, they're paying medical bills, a child gets sick, they're paying medical bills, some sort of tragedy. Uh, and then what what happens is that person then you know, can offer that uh, you know that uh, lien up uh, for sale, and that's called an assignment of the lien. So I'm giving you the the the, um, the situations. I'm giving you the conditions uh, where people typically uh, sign something, and some people assign it at the end of the redemption period because they plain just don't want to deal with the real estate, right? Some people only want to do the interest. So they they you know so they're all different prices and so, you know what's the going rate? It depends on it depends on where you are and what you want. And this is the only piece that would be you know it's it's a negotiable piece, right? Anything that you're dealing with the county is non-negotiable. But this becomes a piece of a negotiable sale, right? Somebody is selling the um, or assigning the lien, right? So they're assigning the lien. The sale of the lien is an assignment of the lien to another to another individual. So as an example, so let's say it would be a situation uh, where it's a $2,000 lien and a, a $100,000 property uh, and, uh, you know, somebody's waited out the redemption period and it's a two-year period of time. Well, uh, if I would have no problem giving that person, uh, you know, uh, their 18% interest on that for the whole, you know, for the whole period of time. But the person may say, okay, and, and rightly so, they may say, well, uh, I want 18%, uh, uh, my 18% interest, uh, plus I want uh, $20,000, which is 20% of the value of that $100,000 property. I'm willing to do that so that I don't have to uh, foreclose on the property. I just want to take, um, you know, I just want to take this money and buy more tax liens. And, and that's not a bad thing. It could be 10%, 20%. You know, uh, even up to uh, you know 30 percent. Let's face it, other people that are looking to buy houses that are out in the marketplace, they're not able to with other strategies, able to go out and buy houses for 10, 20, or 30 cents on the dollar regularly. They just can't do it, right? It's not out there. So, so this is you know this this is the time when if somebody's more of a real estate investor than they are a tax lien investor, well, they might be willing to give somebody 30, you know, 30 cents on a dollar or 40 cents on a dollar. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I've seen that all day long. I've paid uh, 30 and 40 cents on a dollar for a property. I've paid 50 cents on a dollar for a property, right? It depends on whether or not you want that property or it fits into the portfolio. When I say 50 cents on a dollar for a property, and you can also then, so you, you do that and you pay that kicker to somebody who's who's assigning a lien. So you have all these different ways of going. So just understand the key here, what happens at the end of the redemption period, right? I mean, as long as you understand what the value of that property is, uh, you're more in the driver's seat than the next person. So education is the key. Having the right, uh, the right facts is key. Uh, having done your homework is critical, right? That's your protection. If you remember, on everything that we've been talking about, it's actually, right, it's actually to protect yourselves first, right? Now, I mean, when, you know, what happens, you know, with the process, I mean, um, there's the foreclosure process, that's what we're talking about, and so you're going to file, you know, right away, 
uh, you know, what are your expectations? Well, if there's a, if there's a, if there's a lending institution involved, uh, I'll tell you right now, the uh, lending institution uh, is, is chances are they're going to uh, answer the, um, uh, they're going to answer that uh, the summons when they get it, that information, because what's going to happen is that uh, the uh, the paperwork is going to send out, there's going to be a 30-day letter of intent to start a foreclosure action, and that's going to go out to all the interested parties, right, including the um, the lender. And uh, what, what happens, you know, if after 30 days, uh, if it's, you know, if it's not paid off by one of these people, right, the, the bank or whatever, that whoever your attorney is, and I'm going to give you the steps to follow in a second, right, because right now I'm just talking about it, I'm going to give you the steps to follow in a, in a lead foreclosure. Um, and what happens, and they'll, they'll file a complaint uh, for the foreclosure in the county courts, right, and then and then there's a process server, okay, and uh, however, you know, and typically, you know, it could take, you know, another 35 days and then the 30 30 to 60 days after that so let's say you know let's say you wind up having that property in 90 days or even in 120 days uh, or even more than that let's say it took six months to get the property uh, is it is it worth it to you know to go through that in order to get a property absolutely yes it's different in every place some places it's so quick you know it'll make your head spin or some foreclosures will go so fast some will take a little longer uh, but you know um, you know, typically, you know, like my guy in, uh, you know, in Maryland and other deals that I've done, you know, uh, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, these are like normal things, 120 days, these are all normal time frames for this to take place. And it's a process, uh, so it's, it's a matter of, you know, having the, you know, having the right, uh, you know, having the right people on your team to take care of that. Uh, we're not at the stage right now, uh, any of us, uh, that we, uh, that we're at the end of a redemption period where somebody hasn't redeemed. So don't, be afraid of this at the moment. Uh, even don't be afraid of it when it comes up. But if you buy, you know, I mean, if you bought a, a lien right now uh, that had a one-year redemption period, you're one year away from doing any of this, right? But you've got to know about it now, right? So that you understand what the process is, right? But the first thing you've got to do is get your hands on a lien, right? You've got to be able, when I say get your hands on one, you've got to become the owner of a lien, right? So uh, what can you expect? You can expect if there's a if there's a mortgage on the property, it's more and more likely that it will redeem, meaning that mortgage company is going to pay the taxes, right? Pay it off within that 30-day period. So, I mean, that's what's going to happen. Um, you know, I file right away. This is just this is just what the you know just what the process is. Uh, and ex, you know, ex, expectation again, if there is no mortgage, okay, uh, if, it's, if there's no mortgage on the property. Uh, it, you can expect that it's a higher percentage of properties that don't have a mortgage um, that you that you get for the amount of the taxes because uh, once that taxpayer hasn't paid the taxes for whatever reason that they and they've ignored the notice of sale they've ignored all those things uh, you know what you, what takes place now is that the, you know the court just rules in your favor so just understand what takes place if there's no uh, if there's no mortgage on the property, that means there's no mortgage company to send another notice to, right? The notice is only going to that taxpayer, right? Because when, you know, if there is a mortgage company, a notice goes to the taxpayer and a notice goes to the mortgage company, right? It goes to all interested parties. It doesn't mean parties that find the process interesting. Interested parties means uh, any anybody that's got a financial interest, right, in that property. That's what interested parties mean. They've got a financial legal interest. Um, so you know when you know when to you know when to uh, sell you know that you know that lien right when to sell the lien um, as opposed to the property we know that we're going to sell the property after we foreclose on it right after we have the property uh, when are you when are you going to and by the way uh, how it's not difficult to sell a piece of property that you got for ten or twenty or thirty cents on a dollar it's not difficult and. Typically, what we're talking about, if you know, if you're getting a hundred thousand dollar property for two grand in taxes, right? You're talking about you bought that, you got that property for the amount of back taxes. That's two percent on the dollar, right? We're at this stage in the coaching where you hear all of the real down and dirty pieces. That's two percent, two percent on the dollar, two cents on the dollar. Right, that's what my 
my mentee student, that's what my coaching and mentor student did in Maryland. That's what uh, other coaching and mentor students have done in other states. I mean, so we're talking two cents on the dollar, five cents on the dollar. This is huge uh, money, all right? Is it so? Understand that that's the power of this because no matter how good a negotiator that I think I am or that you think you might be, I can tell you right now, you're not going to sit there over a kitchen table with somebody that's you know that's facing uh, foreclosure and work a short sale with them and buy that property that's worth you know um, the two hundred you know two hundred thousand dollars or four thousand dollars right that's two cents uh, that's two percent it's not going to happen where you're going to buy a hundred thousand dollar property for two thousand dollars right and then negotiate a short sale with the bank it's that's not going to happen that way right that's a negotiated sale this piece is the non-negotiated piece right understand right because you've bought you've bought the tax lien right and that tax lien takes precedence takes first position over any other liens right any other liens any other liens you know that's huge you know so I mean so the property you sell after the foreclosure and then the lien you sell right the lien if you want what you sell or you assign that lien um, at the end of the redemption period now uh, of course as I said I buy lien assignments um, other people buy lien assignments. You can find people at that county um, that you're going to that will buy lien assignments. Uh, you may ask the clerk, you know, when you're doing it. You know, uh, do you know anybody? Is there, you know, some of the some of the customers? Is there a big player or two that you know? You can ask them that might buy uh, lien assignments, and they may may know what you're talking about. They may not know what you're talking about. You know, that I want to sell the lien to uh, if you know if the taxpayer. It doesn't pay the taxes because you know because I don't want to foreclose on the property. That's what you can you know you can explain it that way. If it happens to be a clerk that doesn't understand all the language of tax liens, some of the clerks don't. What the clerks do know, that's what I'm saying. They're not going to teach you the business. What they do know um, is uh, when the when the sale uh, when the uh, they know the date of the sale, they know what the starting interest rate is going to be. Uh, they'll know they'll know uh, whether you know it's a you know, it's a bid down the interest environment, or, and also, uh, you know, a premium bidding environment. They'll know those things, right? They'll give you answers on that. Oh, uh, you know, where the sale is going to be, where is the sale, where where is the sale being advertised? These are the things. Those are the questions, and we went through these uh, in uh, in other sessions uh, of the of our coaching sessions. We went through that. So you know, so here we are. So understand what's happening now. We, we're getting more and more and more into uh, what it is we need to be doing. When I say need to be doing, we've been doing things, we've been learning things, but now it's getting into what we need to be doing. I'm going to go through the foreclosure process a little bit, right? Uh, I don't know, and, and I'm just reading it um, uh, in my mind from memory as I think about it and what I want you to do is to you can take some you can take some notes on it um, and you know if you guys uh, like uh, what we'll do is uh, this will be one of the things on the as a as a uh, coaching question you can ask me uh, for uh, for the tax lien foreclosure process right and I, this is what I call the general tax lien foreclosure process it's typical but there are nuances. It's a little different every place. But in general, this is what happens, right? So I mean, this would, you know, this would be something to, you know, to ask for and then to have and then to print out. Okay. So n number one, okay, what you want to do, of course, is determine when the sale is held. Remember that from the very beginning. <clears throat> you we want to ask, right, when the sale is going to be held and attend the sale. Then you're going to buy the tax lien certificate at the public auction. You could also buy it over the counter. You could do that, right? Right? You could also you could buy a struck off, right? But you're going to buy the tax lien certificate. And then what you're going to do is start the clock, right? Um, when I say to start the clock, you've started the clock. The clock is ticking from the day that you bought it. You're going to record this, right, in your in your in in your in in your in your cert 
um, uh, collector. That's what you're going to do. You're going to put that right in there in that certification piece. So you're going to have that. So what you're going to do is on that on that certificate um, on that certificate um, organizer, you're going to put all this information. So what you're going to do? That's when the clock starts. When the clock starts, and then you're going to write at the end when the redemption period is. Remember, we're going to write that in red. So what you're going to? That's what you do. So the clock starts there. Understand that. And what you're going to do is um, also when you're at the tax sale, when you have a chance, right? You can also pay any additional on the, pa uh, the uh, property for two years from the original tax sale, meaning. Uh, you can you can buy prior liens, right? You can ask if there are any prior liens. Some people have uh, have asked about this. Who has first position? That kind of thing. Ask if there are any prior liens, uh, and, and you know you want to make sure. And if you want the property, right? Because I want the properties. I only buy first position. So you have to ask: uh, Is this first position? Is this lien going to be in first position, or are there prior liens? If there are prior liens for sale you can buy those prior liens. I'm just giving you the whole process from beginning to end. At the same time, remember we talked about subsequence, right? You can ask and just if, and you'll get the actual uh, interest rate without having to bid on it. Let's say it's an interest rate of 18%. You'll ask, you'll say, well, you know what can I have? You know, what I want to do is buy any subsequent taxes that are available as well. So you ask, you, you can buy the prior ones and the subsequent ones. Right, so uh, the reason why you would buy the prior ones is to make sure that you have your first position, right? And the subsequent ones you're buying because you don't have to bid down the interest, and you know that you're going to get those um, those subsequent liens at full boat interest, whatever that highest interest rate is in that county, right? And so at that point, right, uh, you wait out the redemption period, right? You've done all this, you know, you've done the work. You've recorded all the information right on the forms that we've given you that are on the tax lien cash machine site, uh, and then you know you wait out the redemption period, whether it's six months or one year or two years, right? At the at the end period when that happens, right? If uh, if it's non-redemption, that's all we're talking about right now. Uh, what you would do is you would give the, all the paperwork. Right, the tax lien, uh, the address of the property, the value of the property. You give them all the information that you have, right? Um, and you give that to the the uh, the tax lien foreclosure attorney. Uh, and then what you do is just understand that the attorney will order the order the title work on the property to find the owners and the lien holders. And they'll then that attorney is going to wind up giving notice right to those uh, to those individuals and companies that might have interest in it, right? And then what will happen after that is that the attorney is going to file a, a list pendants, right? Just like it's a regular foreclosure, right? It's hanging lawsuit that there's a tax lien, there's a, there's a lien on the property, and that, that, uh, that someone is pursuing a foreclosure, right? That someone is you. And then the attorney is going to send out a 30-day letter of intent, or sometimes it's just called a 30-day letter, to start the foreclosure action. Uh, again, I'm not an attorney, um, nor am I practicing law. I'm just giving you what the general process is, so that you get a feel for it. So that you know, the, and what we've done, we've made a commitment to to educating everybody and coaching everybody, so that they have as much information and knowledge as possible to go out and make good decisions in in terms of what liens to buy and what liens not to buy, right? And what the process is in the beginning, right? And then what the process is at the end, what you can expect as well, right? Uh, so what's going to happen then, that letter goes out to all the parties. And after uh, 30 days, if that's not paid, meaning if some, if uh, the, the, uh, the interested parties did not pay, meaning they did not pay or redeem the taxes, if they didn't pay the taxes, uh, then that attorney is going to... Uh, uh, file a complaint of foreclosure, right in you know in that county court, whatever that county uh, court is. That's what they're gonna they're gonna file it in the county. And then the complaint happens. What hap takes place is a process server comes on out. The attorney uses a process server, right, and they send sends that to all uh, you know all of the defendants, right, all the people that are in the the, the lawsuit, and uh, everybody that's got an interest in the uh, pro uh, the property. And uh, if it's out of state. 
you know, it'll go certified mail, you know, or even a process server in that state, so that everybody is served, right? When they say served, everybody, everybody gets notice, right? It's posted, and at the same time, everybody, everybody uh, that has an interest in that property is served that notice, right? So this is this is what happens. So this takes the mystery out of it. So you get what's going to happen. Um, after, uh, depending on where it is, 30, 35 days, right, for the date that the that the last um, um, interested party or defendant uh, was served, right? A default and an order that it'll si that'll set the time and the place uh, and the amount of redemption is going to be requested. What happens is that this is the last chance for the lien holders uh, to pay off the lien with interest and all the costs and all the attorney's fees, right? Because somebody's got to pay all those costs and all the attorney's fees. They're going to have to pay that. Right, so it's not like you're going to have to. You find the attorney, and you're paying the attorney out of you know. Here's some money out of my pocket. Uh, if you can't foreclose on the property, I'm going to pay you. It doesn't work that way. So either the attorney, either the um, either one or all of these uh, interested parties, these defendants get together and they figure out how to do this so that the attorney's fees and all of the all the costs involved in that, and all of the interest and everything gets paid. Meaning then you get all of your fees back. Right, uh, and, and th that you've laid out. Uh, in addition to, then at that point, you would get if if they redeemed, you would get all of your money back plus the interest, right? But that's what'll happen. But they don't do that um, uh, at that point within 30 or 60 days, right? What happens is that a request for final judgment is going to go out, um, and that's requested if the lien isn't uh, paid off or redeemed, uh, and uh, and then the, the date is set, right? The court issues a judgment of deed. You, and then, then you get ownership of the property, and the property is yours. As simple as that, right? Um, and then you just record the deed uh, at the clerk. Uh, you get insurance, and then you take possession, right? At that point, you can sell the house, you can rent out the house, you can live in the house, you can do whatever you want to the house, right? You've got no mortgage on the house. You've got a free and clear home, right? This is this is what it is. This is this, you know this is and this is. What uh, what I do over and over again. This is what my students, my coaching students, my uh, mentee students this is what they do over and over again. This is just you know this is just part of the regular thing. You take possession, and then that is the end of the foreclosure period. And now you have a physical property, right? That's so 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 important to understand that, right? That's that's what it is. So the other thing, what I'm going to add to this, right? Before Right, and that's the foreclosure process. And remember what I want you to do with this. Uh, you know, I want you to you know send send me a request right for that for that, and I'll break it down into steps. Uh, it'll be much less uh, wordy than the way I just explained it. It'll just it, and and what it'll, what it'll be is something uh, that's templated for the future, so that when you do buy liens, uh, you know when it's you know six months from now or a year from now, two years from now, uh, after you've you know after you've bought your your lien that you'll see what the process is. Now you'll talk to the attorney. You'll ha this. What this will do is this will give you a good way of uh, discussing this with whatever attorney you're going to use at that time, right? And sometimes the county assists in that. Sometimes the county actually just has a fee uh, and and does the whole thing. Uh, but but I'm giving you the worst case scenario, which is that you'll have to use an attorney. So I'm telling you that way. And it's not a bad thing. You still wind up with the property for the amount of taxes owed, huh? You know, so you know that's that's the way it is. That's that's part of this process. But what I'm going to add uh, to this uh, before we get into the nitty gritty of uh, you guys getting out there into the uh, marketplace, getting out there and buying some liens, uh, I'm going to uh, give you the, the two different two different pieces. One is some things that you'd want to do. Right, if you want redemption, meaning the types of properties that you want to buy, um, the, you know the types of conditions and scenarios uh, that you want to look for, you know, on those properties. If you want redemption, meaning if you want redemption, I'm not talking about religious redemption. I'm talking about uh, redemption if you want the uh, all of your principal back plus the interest. Right, these are the things. And then I'm going to give uh, give you the examples uh, uh, of of the conditions. And what to do if you don't want redemption, or if you want the property more than you want the interest, right? Those are the two things, right? Either we want uh, the uh, the uh, the interest more than we want the properties. Yeah, we have to know who we are, 
uh, or uh, if we want the um, properties more than the more than we want the interest, right? So if we want the interest more than the properties, what you want to do is buy liens on a single-family residential property uh, in um, in more upscale neighborhoods, right? You know, middle class and above neighborhoods, and especially if they're occupied, right? So I'm just I'm just like laying it right out. Um, you can uh, buy liens on properties that uh, have uh, have mortgages, right? You buy liens on the properties that have mortgages because when it has a mortgage, there's there's another interested party, right? As opposed to when there's no mortgage, the interested party is the person that's the taxpayer. In a mortgage company, that's another person that might pay off the taxes. Again, there's no harm, no foul here, right? No harm, no foul. What I want you to understand is that the, the bank, uh, you you're not losing to the bank. Uh, the bank pays the taxes. You're getting all of your money back, you know, plus the interest, right? So it's not that you, and it's not a lost cause. But this is, I'm giving you the scenarios of what to do if you want to increase your chances of not getting the property and only getting all of your money back plus interest, right? That's what we're on right now, right? So you also will uh, buy liens on owner-occupied properties where the tax bill goes to the property. Right, so owner-occupied properties where the tax bill goes to the property. Tax bill goes to the property. What does that mean? That means that the the owner or the taxpayer sees they they live in the property. They see the tax bill. It doesn't get away from them. Right? If sometimes right it, uh, on the the reverse of that, somebody happens to have a you know a, you know a, a summer home or a piece of investment real estate. Uh, what what? What people do if they run into hard times, they really they pay attention to the home they live in, and the home that's the investment piece of real estate or the summer home, right? They they may get a little lackadaisical with paying the taxes, and when something when it goes out of state, uh, there's a greater chance that that person will miss paying the taxes. It's just the way it is, right? Um, the, the thing is is that that stay away from if you want all of your your um, your principal and your interest, meaning if you want redemption, meaning what you want is all of your principal back plus interest, then stay away from vacant land, stay away from industrial land, uh, and stay away from a vacant single-family homes. Just stay away from vacant things, because so if something is vacant, it increases its chance of non-redemption. It doesn't mean that it's that it's 100%. If you remember, uh, you know, way back when I. When I did the uh, original session with uh, Josh, what you uh, what you saw I showed you some things that I thought uh, wouldn't redeem uh, that I had the uh, the that that I bought the tax liens on assignment and uh, because the properties were vacant, but they actually indeed redeemed right one of them redeemed. So I mean that happens. So just just understand that none of this is 100%. What it does is increase your chances of that. So what I just gave you uh, is you know are the um, are not the rules, uh, but these are these are things you can do to increase your chance of redemption, right? That's what you buy the liens on, right? And redemption means that you get all of your money back plus the interest. And then if you want the property or if you don't want it to redeem, you'll uh, buy liens on properties in uh, lower income neighborhoods, right? Lower income neighborhoods, because um, what can happen is, in the lower income neighborhoods, it might be more investment properties. Yes. So, so what we're doing is, it's not like a, you know, a, a four bedroom, two and a half bath on a cul-de-sac in a subdivision, right? We're talking about, you know, things, you know, that, you know, that maybe it's a, it's a rental home or something like that, right? So just understand a rental home, an absentee landlord, maybe a tired landlord, maybe so what, for whatever the purpose. I'm just, I'm just letting you know, right? What, you know, what the, what the criteria uh, are. So uh, also, uh, you can uh, buy liens on properties that have no mortgages, right? There's free and clear properties. There are many, 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 many properties that have no mortgages. About a third of the properties in the United States have no mortgages on them. So it's huge. It's you know, it's a huge piece. Everybody, most people think that every home has a mortgage on it. That's not true. So, so if there's no mortgage on it, that's a you know, that's a a flag for us to say, okay, well, you know what, we've got you know, we've got more of a you know, a more of a shot of getting the property then, right? Uh, so also you can buy uh, liens on vacant properties and liens 
um, on properties where that tax bill is not going to the property, right? It's not going to the taxpayer there, but it's going out of state someplace, and it's got an out-of-state taxpayer, right? So it's like out of sight, out of mind. Sometimes it's out of state, out of mind. Somebody's investing out of state. That could that could be the case. So so just understand that. Just like me, when I'm buying a property out of state, when I'm doing this, I make sure, right, at the end of the redemption period, if I'm going to get the property, if this doesn't fit into my investment portfolio, if I can't have good management in there, I sell the property quick. Just understand what I'm doing. If I'm getting a property that's, you know, worth, a, you know, a hundred grand for two thousand or four thousand or five or six thousand dollars, you got to understand. I take this thing, you know, sell it for half price or a little more than half price or what I, you know, I sell it the same day. So I just, I just want you to understand. Right, the the power of this, right? But you've got to start with buying the lien. If you don't buy the lien, you're not going to get to any of this, right? So um, you can also uh, buy liens on vacant industrial uh, or single-purpose commercial land, right? Just just you know, if vacant commercial, uh, uh, vacant commercial land, vacant uh, industrial land, and um, and then uh, liens on houses that are obviously vacant. Right, so it's the vacancy. So, you know, so now we've gone, you know, gone through the foreclosure process, and then, you know, these pieces that we've talked about, because people have talked about situations, uh, you've asked questions, you know, you know, what if you, you know, what if you want the property? Well, you know, these are the these are the action steps. These are the things to do. These are the doables, right? Meaning, you buy liens on properties that are in these conditions, right? So you know now, you know, if you want redemption. Um, or and when you say if you want redemption, that means you want all of your principal back plus the interest. And if you want the property, which means you don't want redemption, right? It's it's you know the pieces that we just went through. So I just we just did it from beginning to end. So that's a, that's a lot of information again. And it's up to you now to start to you know ask those questions and then start to use it, right? And that really that puts us uh, into a, a very exciting. Uh, spot here where we are because we've laid the foundation of tax liens tax deeds right we've laid the foundation uh, and for, for uh, understanding we understand you know that we can you know at four percent we double our money in 18 years at 25 percent we double it in 2.8 years we understand how powerful tax liens are we understand that as as powerful as they are, right? We also have to do some work, right? That the tax liens aren't going to buy themselves. We have to go out and buy them, right? The reason why the question is, right? Uh, how come more people don't do this? Well, it's because people don't do it. What do I mean by that? I mean that people will hear some information and they don't take action on it, right? So that's why we have have this laid out. That's why this is a coaching course, right? That's why it's coaching. These are coaching sessions so that you hear it, you ask the questions, you get the questions answered. And But if up to this point, it's been on information, right? Information and education. Now we're getting into the piece where it becomes experiential, right? And this is, this is the portion where you're going to be doing something. So this is a really exciting time. What do I mean by that? I mean that we've been We've been talking about that 800-page manual, right? And we've talked about that uh, from the beginning when we started it. Well, um, as of tomorrow, that's going to be online for you to access. Why are we going to have that online uh, for you to access? Because we finished laying the groundwork and walking you through the tax lien process, right? I mean, there's more to learn. Don't get me wrong. We've got more sessions, right? But at this point... Now you've got the information, right, to begin to do some damage. You know what questions to ask. You know you should know at this point who you are as an investor and who you are not as an investor, right? At this point, so we've laid that groundwork brick by brick by brick. We've walked you through the, the, the tax lien process. You've learned the steps to design your investment strategy. You put that together. Who am I? Meaning who are you? as an investor, right? And then you put the strategy together to satisfy the who you are, right? That's so important. You've learned the steps to buy your first tax lien or deed. You've already learned that, right? So you know that. Now it's time to put that into use, right? Today, right, 
you learned about what happens at the end of the process, right? We talked about, right, what to do if you want redemption, right? And what to do if you don't want redemption, if you want the prop or the property, right? We know, and you know, that at the end of the process, at the end of the redemption period, that um, you either going to one of two things are going to happen: either you're going to get all of your money back plus the interest, or you're going to get the property, which means you have to foreclose on the property. So we have these two pieces. So at the end, you now know what the end of the rainbow looks like. You know what the end of the process is, right? But there is no end of the process if you don't begin it, right? And so we went through all that, and you've learned that, right? And now right, we're ready to implement your training. You are ready to implement your training. This is now for you, what I, what I want you to do, what you're going to do, is jot down the counties that you're interested in. You're going to look, you're going to jot them down, and you're going to call, and you're going to ask the questions. When is the tax sale? Uh, how can I get the list? How much, how much is the list? Ask them those questions, right? Find out. Find out. I would start in the beginning with a county that's close to me so that I can actually go and visit the county and learn and ask some face-to-face -face questions before I before I go from if I lived in Ohio and I start calling in Texas right away right I would do it where I could call and I could go down there I could call and I could go down there you'll have the information right it's there so uh, this is a very exciting time for those of us who really are serious about moving forward and I know that uh, by the questions that you guys have asked Right, I know by the question that you've asked, you know, while we're while I'm doing the coaching sessions and the questions that you've asked me uh, to uh, to answer by email, I know it, that you're that you're going to be doing this, and I know some of you have actually begun to take some steps already. Right, this is this is so important. Right, so this is the time that you're going to take action. You're going to actually get out there. And then find out when the sales are, what the situations are, look at some things, and then you, you're also uh, going to do some due diligence on properties. I want you to be able to to get a list. I want you to call. I want you to see how you know see how it works. See if you can get yourselves um, a uh, one of the tax sale lists. You get one. Ask when the next tax sale is. Just keep calling. Find just just keep. Going through the questions, right, and you'll and get yourself a list and do some due diligence on the properties. If you if the sales aren't coming up, ask them for a past list, right, to do to do the exercise. You can do that as well. Ask them for the list from the last sale if they have it, and then do some due diligence on the properties. Some lists are going to have the addresses of the properties. Some are just going to have a block and lot number, right. So just understand that. And don't just go to one county in the state that you're going to work in. Go to like a half dozen counties, and you'll see some differences, right? You might have a situation where the six counties you check are going to be the same. I've never experienced that, but it doesn't mean that you won't, right? So, but just go so that you'll see the nuances. If you want, uh, also, you know, call, you know, call over at the next state or another, you know, call one of the other states. But I want you to be able to begin uh, closer in in terms of this exercise, right, so that you, you're actually doing the work. And I also want you to keep an eye on knowing which, you know, which states and then which counties you're going to ultimately be an investor in. Just understand there's a lot of information here in these 800 pages. All the counties are there. So I don't want you to get lost in county land, right, and just say, oh, now where do I begin? So that's why I'm suggesting that you begin, you know, closer to home. Even if your state doesn't have such a high interest rate, uh, you know, even if your state has a longer redemption period, just start some place where you can actually go down and ask some questions, right? So that you know you're doing it on the telephone, right? And sometimes they'll request an email instead, but you get the telephone. You can send somebody an email, meaning, uh, you know, meaning one of the clerks, uh, and you can go and and visit the tax, you know, the uh, the tax assessor, the, ta the tax collector's office. And also, at this point, this is a great time to ask the questions uh, from, our, uh, from our hotline, okay, which is a support network, which is, you know, you'll get me at George at netincomerealestate.com, right? And that's where we're going to be, you know, it's answering it one on one as opposed to a forum where everybody is seeing uh, the specific questions that everybody else is answering. Because the thing is, at this point, 
your your information, and this is why we did it this way. Now, your your information is personal. I don't share it with anybody. So whatever whatever you say to me is between you and me. That's just the way it is, right? And nobody else sees that. You know, you may you may be looking to plunk down a million dollars in whatever state. I can I can talk to you about that. You may be looking to you may be looking to uh, uh, use uh, use financial arbitrage. Uh, and, you know, meaning, and you're going to use somebody else's money for that. I can, you know, I can talk to you about that as well. The point is, what I want you to do is do this exercise so that you can begin it wherever you are financially. That that you can, you know, just take this, take that step, be bold, and begin it. So important, right? So, what do I want you to, what do I want you to do uh, before the next class? Right? I want you to review this training session, this one. Right, because this is the end of the rainbow, right? Meaning the end, not the end of our sessions. Our sessions keep going. We've got ten sessions, right? So understand that. But what what I want you to do, right, is understand that we are going to convene again, like nine days from now, right? What I want you to do in those nine days is to do this work. This is the life piece, and all throughout those nine days, right? I want you to be by asking me questions, right, on the email, so right, so that I can answer them, right, so that I can help. This is the coaching. You wanted coaching? Here's the coaching. This is what it looks like. Nobody else in the industry does this. Nobody else in the industry is equipped for it, right? So, let you know, let's get it going. So, what we want, what I want for you is to utilize this, right? I want you to use the coaching hotline email, right? It's george at netincomerealestate.com. So you're going to do that. You know, you know the, the thing is, you can even on the search chart, you remember that search chart that we discussed uh, earlier, uh, earlier today? I mean, take a look at it. Even make a mock, uh, you know, uh, an M-O-C-K, a mock search chart. Right. If any of you have ever done any trading in the market, you've done mock trading before you actually put money in it. Take some information, write it down on the search chart, so that you have what to do. So you can ask me a question. You know, you say, "Well, here's a, here's a property. The lien is this. The value of the property is that. Right. The redemption period is this. Uh, and this is what I want. Is this a good? You know, you'll ask me, "Well, is this a good deal? Or what do I think? We'll get it. We can get into a conversation over this, so that you can really learn the business right this is a, an absolute huge thing this is the time for you right to spread your wings and get out there and do it but just understand what I'm saying I mean please do not uh, become overwhelmed with those 800 pages of information right we've set it up with the live links so that the links to the counties are there not all counties have good websites not all counties have even complete websites it's whatever's there is there however the counties are right they have telephone numbers uh, in, in and so what I want you to what I want you to do is to pick up the phones uh, call the counties ask them those questions you want to ask them when is the next tax sale right and you want to ask them uh, what the what the interest rate is and you want to ask them how you can get your hands on the uh, the list right I mean at some counties They've got at every sale. They've got more than ten thousand liens. Some have twenty thousand liens. Some have thirty thousand. There are thousands of liens in the counties. They're out there. So just just call, right? And I'm talking about so some of those are some of the bigger counties. Some of the smaller counties have less. But just understand that there's the you're going to have the county um, in charge of it. You're going to have uh, the um, the tax collector is going to be there. Right, the tax assessor uh, might be involved as well, but you have these clerks there. Uh, they they are in this all the time. Begin to ask the questions and start the process now. I'm here. We are here. The whole support team is here to help you do this. This is the coaching. This is the piece that's invaluable right now. This is to get you up and running so that you take it from just that the informational piece, the educational piece, and turn it into doing right. This is the experiential piece, so that's what we carved out. So again, what I what I want from you guys, and I'm going to have things to discuss as well, right? Because I'm going to be doing the same thing, right? And I'll and I'll talk to you about you know what I found. So it's like I'm you know I'm no different than you, except that I've been doing this a lot longer, right? So here's the thing. So 
you know, I'll start the discussion, then you know, you'll start it, and then we'll we'll actually talk about it. And I want to have um, I want to have you sending me things beforehand so that I can use these things, right? And I'll ask the permission: Is this something that I can use, you know, with the rest of the folks that are going to be online? And if it's not okay, right, it stays between you and me, right? At this point, that's why we have the that's why it's the private email, and that the whole group doesn't see it, right? Uh, now, at this point, what we're going to do, uh, we're going to open uh, the night up to uh, Q and A, some questions and answers. And then, um, and then, what I want you to do is to get psyched and get ready, right? Because because tomorrow is when it begins for you. Tomorrow you begin becoming tax lien investors. Okay, let's do the Q and A. Brian, what do we have? George, some excellent questions came in while you were talking there. Uh, will the bank pay back the foreclosure fee if they want to redeem the property? Yeah, the, the, what and that's a it's really that's an excellent uh, that's an excellent question. The thing is that if they want to redeem the property, they're going to have to. It's part of the legal process. It's part of the legal go. process, right? So, so the thing that's why I that's why I love this because it's not like you're just taking a pig in a poke. It's not just a chance, you know. It's not like you know th you know throwing some uh, pizza dough against the wall, right? I mean, th what happens is at the end of the redemption period. Right, we know that if we don't get, you know, if if, uh, if it doesn't redeem, uh, then then we have this uh, foreclosure process. And the thing is, uh, just like as I did those steps, you remember I was talking about that, is that um, that the that the uh, attorney uh, then sends notice. And part of the things, just like any foreclosure, there are fees, things accrue. The attorney fees, the legal fees, just like any regular home foreclosure, right? You know, whoever it is, whoever's involved in that foreclosure, uh, then they have to pay those fees in order to bring it to, to bring it up to date. It's the same thing with the tax liens. Uh, those fees, those attorney fees, uh, and the additional interest, uh, what whatever has accrued. Okay, what's going to happen is uh, who, who, whoever is going to uh, bring it up to date, they have to pay that and the attorney's fees. So, excellent question. And uh, yes, they uh, you know yes they pay it. Okay, great. Uh, someone asked here, define single-purpose commercial. Just looking for some examples. I think it was a term you used when you were sure. talking about uh, that properties. Yeah, single-purpose commercial is uh, um, it's it's another as an example. It's kind of like um, like freestanding uh, triple net lease, single tenant commercial. Uh, and I mentioned that uh, in in a in a in a past uh, coaching session. Uh, what it is, you know, if you take a look at a, you know, a 7-Eleven or a Friendly's or something like that, uh, where you know there's a, there's only one tenant, or you know the owner is the tenant, right? There's only so if you go to a Friendly's and it's a, f a freestanding building with a parking lot and it says Friendly's and there's and there's no Dunkin' Donuts attached to it, that's a that's a uh, that's a that's a single tenant uh, property, right? Or a single use. So you know that's what that is. All right. Um, is there any relationship to attorney foreclosure fees to the underlying property? For example, a residential home versus foreclosing on a multifamily or office building. Uh, the fees. Uh, each attorney is going to have their own fees. You know that kind of thing. Uh, they're, they're not like totally. Uh, they're not totally out of whack. But yeah, they may charge a little more for uh, for a commercial property than for uh, for a residential property. They may look at it and say, okay, well, here's a property that's um, you know that's worth. Uh, I'll just tell you this. My experience is that I've I've paid more to foreclose on a on a million dollar property uh, than I have on a, a fifty thousand dollar property. Um, you know, the, so whenever, whenever the, whenever the, the price goes up, you know, the value of the property goes up, uh, you know, in, in general, and not as, not as a rule, but in, in general that, uh, you know, that the, the, the fees, you know, uh, could increase from the attorney. That's all. But it's not like, uh, it's any, you know, huge percentage or anything else. And I'll say this on top of it, um, even, you know, even with those little bit of, uh, you know, increased fees, uh, or whatever, it's, it's always been well worth it for me to foreclose on a, on a tax lien property, especially, you know, when I'm, you know, working, when I'm working the ITV, uh, investment to value ratios, right. And I've, you know, you know, I've got a tax lien you know, for uh, you know that I bought for twenty thousand dollars, and it's you know against the million dollar property. I'm not too worried about the few extra bucks in uh, in attorney fees. 
right? Any day that you've got twenty thousand dollars in, and you're going to get a, you know a windfall of of a million bucks. And not to say that I throw that money away. I do not. I'm very conservative. But when but when you've got something like that, uh, understand that um, you know you, you you'll be wanting to have the best attorney as opposed to the cheapest one, because you want to move very quickly. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, George. That's it for the questions. Kind of light on questions today. You guys are a quiet bunch. We've uh, gone through a, a ton of information over the past few weeks and uh, kind of, you know, coming down to the point where we've gotten all the education behind us. Not, I wouldn't say behind us, but, uh, you know, we got some great education and now it's time to start putting it to use. So uh, keep those questions coming in and uh, let us know what else. Oh, here, here's one I just popped in on industrial land. How would you check for underlying environmental concerns? Yeah, here's the thing. Yeah, that's a great question. Okay, uh, there's something. There's something. There's a phase one uh, that you would do, um, and you know, again, um, you you have to have a stomach. If you if you don't know industrial land right off the bat, or you don't have an inkling as to what to do with that land, right? You don't have an idea as to who the customer might be, like who you're going to sell that thing to. Um, you know, then you stay away from it because I have seen people get hurt with uh, with industrial land. But you would do a phase one, a phase one environmental, uh, and then you know basically they drill down into the ground, they look for stuff, and then they do a phase two, you know, which they you know they they drill down further. That's if they find some stuff, you know, that's in the you know up, and they keep going down and to see you know when it you know when when the uh, you know when the seepage or whatever it is when the stuff has stopped. So. Um, so uh, have I done it with uh, with industrial properties? Yes, I have, and I've done it with industrial properties because I've had in mind what the end use was going to be. I had a customer for it. I knew what I was doing, right? So you know, um, industrial land is not you know, or an industrial property is not something that you do just like on a whim. So it's a wonderful question, uh, but um, but unless you have a specific there's a specific site, and you know that there's something's going to happen. As an example, um, uh, you know there, there might be a factory that you know uh, that exists, but at the same time, you know that um, uh, you know a you know a, a large scale that Gold's Gym is coming to town, and it's the only site that would be good for a Gold Gym, uh, and and you know they would want to move into this where it was like maybe a knitting mill or something like that, right? That it was you know it was the land and that you know and then the building. Um, and so that you would have, you know, you would have a customer for it, um, and that you, and that they would agree to mitigate some of those issues if they wanted to take over, or that it would be sold for community use, right? That you could sell it actually back to, you know, somebody that's got a 501c3, you know, somebody, you know, and and that's another piece of the business that's actually on the real estate side, you know, selling it to somebody, you know, that's got a nonprofit. Uh, and they're gonna, you know, um, take the property and, um, and you know, re, you know, reposition it. And you know, and use it to serve the uh, you know the community, or even turn it into a medical center. Uh, so so just so just it's just it's a phase one, phase two, phase three. That's how you would do it. Uh, but I would say that you know un unless you had a clue, um, you know you did some detective work, you knew that you know some sort of organization uh, was looking for um, you know a site like that matched that. Um, I, you know I would stay away from it. I only do the industrial stuff when when. I uh, when I say stuff, I only do the, the industrial property when I when I have uh, a plan in place, and that plan uh, includes who's going to buy it from me because I don't hold on to that property. Okay. Okay. Great. Thanks, George. I know that uh, industrial was actually addressed in the manual um, under um, one of the latter sections. It just it talks to exactly what you just said. Just be careful about uh, getting into those industrial properties until you have some experience. Uh, behind you. Um, right. Here you go, George. Um, you know, California is a tax deed state. However, I would prefer tax lien certificates. Where should I look and why? What's your best top five areas? <laughs> well, the thing is, what, what's what's your cri I would ask, what's your criteria for best top five? Is, you, is it is, so? That's that's the thing. Is it is it for interest? Is it for short redemption period? So uh, you know, I don't know what the person's what the person's criteria is. So yeah, if I would just, know, just, just I would I'll tell money. you what. Well, well, just to make money. So <laughs> they have to be a little more specific than that. Right. Uh, to make money, they're they're all good to make money. So so uh, what what whoever that is, what they can do is send send me 
uh, that question uh, via email, all right, and then we'll we'll quantify and qualify it a little bit, and then I'll give them uh, an answer um, uh, in accordance with with the question. Meaning, uh, you know, are they look when they say just to make money, look make money over a four year period, make money, uh, you know, at the end of three years, make money at the end of two years, make money at the end of six months, uh, you know what? So you know what is the point? So. We now know, and by the way, on that 800-page uh, piece, with everything, really, you know, the redemption periods are there. We have you have all that information. But w what I'd like you to do, um, uh, wherever that, whoever asked that question, who asked that question, Brian? Uh, that was Chuck. Good, Chuck. What yeah. I want you to do is just just shoot just shoot that just uh, shoot that to the email. And what we'll do is and and um, and you know we'll have a, a conversation on that back and forth, and we'll hone it in, and and, and I'll and I'll help you choose the uh, you know the, the right place a little bit. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. That does, George. Thank you. I think that really comes Good. down to what we talked about a couple modules ago, which is really um, thinking through your exact plan and what you want to get out of taxing and investing. What your strategy is, it comes down to creating your investment strategy. So that you can be successful uh, long term, because everyone's going to be different. Mine's going to be different from yours, and and ours might be different from Chuck's. So um, you know, every person's going to have a little different strategy out there. All right. Uh, All right. Good. A couple more questions popping in, yep. and then I think we're getting kind of down to the end here. Uh, when purchasing a lien, is there any cash flow between the time you purchase and the redemption date? Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, the answer is none. There is no cash flow because the thing is, it's not going to pay you until the end of the redemption period. Yep. So, or or if somebody pays, uh, if they redeem before the end of the redemption period, right? Then you get then you get your interest, right? Plus your money back, right? So that would be between. But there's no ongoing cash flow, you know, over that period. So what you have to do is, is, is and I, as I've mentioned in. Um, in other coaching sessions and past coaching sessions, that you pretty much have to look at it, you know, as um, you know, as, as a long-term investment for whatever that term is. Meaning, you can't stick your hand in there. It's not like having the money in your pocket. So it's there. It rides out the redemption period. So for that period of time, uh, you know, you can't touch you, you can't touch that money. You've got to be so. That's why you want to look very carefully uh, if if um, if you're in a position where you know where you're saying, okay, I've got X amount of dollars, but um, uh, you know, but I, I might need it sooner rather than later, then you should uh, probably, uh, you may want, I should say, should you may want to look at uh, areas where the redemption period is uh, shorter as opposed to longer. That's all. Great, thank you very much. Um, one more question here, and, and oh, this is from David, by the way. David, uh, just a quick shout out for David. Uh, attended a tax lien auction recently. Did some networking, starting to apply the skills that he's learning here in class. So, uh, you know, kudos on taking action there, David. Great job. Um, David's asking, what about if there's a renter in the building? Uh, it doesn't really impact us. Yeah, that's great, uh, uh, David. Uh, by the way, David, congratulations on that. I love that. I love when people go and take action, you know, because the idea is you've got to get a lien in order to get to any anywhere on this. You must get the lien. It all begins with a lien. If you, it's like the the mighty oak tree uh, is grown with an, a little acorn, right? So the little acorn is the tax lien, and it grows to the mighty oak tree, or at the end of the redemption period, because because it, you're going to get all that money back plus interest, right? Or you're going to wind up with the property, right? The property is the oak, right? So, uh, so you know, you're right in line for it, and and I love that because that's what happens. You have to go out. So, congratulations for going to the sale. Congratulations for doing the networking. Yeah, that's what it's all about, and um, and it's really good. The question, as far as the tenant is concerned, the tenant is not the taxpayer. Uh, what's good? Okay, I've uh, I've gotten properties where the um, uh, where it hasn't redeemed, um, and I wound up with the uh, with the property, and the taxpayer has been inside, and I've kept that tenant. So you know that that's happened. Uh, I've also had properties uh, where it's it's uh, it hasn't redeemed, and I got the property, and the tenant was there, and there's no way that I wanted to keep that property because it wasn't the kind of property that I wanted to hold on to in my portfolio, right? So I sold it to the tenant at a cheap price. So a tenant is very good when I have a tenant. If they're paying their rent, it's really good because either, number one, um, they keep paying the tenant when I decide to hold on to the property. They keep paying the rent. Or, number two, there's somebody that I can sell the property to cheap. 
right? And so, and understand you can be creative on that side, right? You can sell, you can uh, sell the property uh, cheap to the person for half price, or you can sell it to them on a land contract, right? You, meaning, you know, they they pay uh, they pay every month. Um, you know, it's kind of like a, you know like a car loan. You don't get the title until you make the last payment on the car loan. Uh, so you could do it on a land contract sale. You can have you know an attorney make one of those up for you. I mean, so it's it's. Um, you know, and I've got uh, contracts that I've used, uh, and they they work very well for the land contract, and it's a wonderful thing. Why would you want to do it on a land contract? Because, quite frankly, uh, you know, the, the the money that you paid for the for the property is only going to be a couple of months' rent uh, compared to what the, you know what the person is what you know uh, what what price you're going to sell it for. So you'll be you'll be able to. Um, You'll be able to get your investment back, you know, after after like three or four or five months, uh, not even a year, you know, worth of rent, and then uh, <laughs> and then you, then you've got, you know, what happens is you've got somebody paying you a mortgage a mortgage payment now um, every month, uh, all the way up until whether you have a ten year land contract or a five year land contract or a, a twenty year land contract. And the beautiful part of it is, is that if they stop paying the uh, the rent, uh, you still have to go through a foreclosure process. But they don't own the deed; you do. So it's a very simple process, and it's you know it's easier than an eviction. Uh, for me, it's always been easier. And uh, and at the and at the same time, it's just a you know it's just a wonderful uh, uh, profitable way to do business. So you may want to consider doing that. The tenant is a very good thing to have uh, in uh, you know. If it's if we're talking about a you know a, a single family property like that, very good, excellent question. Great. All right, one more and then we'll wrap it up, George. And, and by the way, if yep. there's any questions after this one, shoot them over to us, uh, George at EdicomRealEstate dot com. It's on your uh, on the screen there. Uh, last question here: Can I borrow from an IRA IRA and pay it back with interest and pay myself a salary from the property to pay the bills? Wow, that's really so. So you want to become a, um, you want to become sort of an employee of some some entity that's doing that. Uh, that's in in essence, uh, the the question is you can the thing is sort of doable. But send me uh, very specifically, send me some information on that so that what I'll um, what you want to do, send that in a in a private question, and I'll give you some answers and some suggestions. Uh, uh, and uh, and the thing is, what people do all the time. Uh, like falling off a log is becoming self-directed, uh, but it sounds like you don't want to become self-directed. It sounds like you want to borrow off it. I'm wondering why you, you know you want to borrow it and put it back as opposed to being self-directed. So um, you know because really the the strength of the, of this is in you know taking the money, uh, get you know getting out of that you know wh whatever you're in now you know whatever uh, whatever whoever your custodian is now get it self-directed so that you have control. Not me. I don't have control. Right, uh, it's not about that. It's about you having control of it, and then you buy the you buy the tax liens inside of that self-directed retirement account, and the money grows the grows in there, and then you just keep stuffing the money there, and then you you then don't have the need to keep paying back uh, this you know uh, you know this other uh, this other IRA uh, that uh, that you're that uh, you're not the custodian on. Right, you may have reasons why you want to do that. I don't know what those reasons are. So just give me a little more information, uh, you know, and just send it to me at George at netincomerealestate.com, and we'll have a little conversation over it. Okay. Thanks, George. Well, that's uh, that's the last question. So let's go ahead and wrap her up. Yeah, that's good, guys. I just want to uh, congratulate you all again on um, on uh, making it uh, to the point where you you now have the chance to make it. This is really where the rubber meets the road. This is really where it's at. Uh, T uh, tomorrow, get in to get into the to the 800 page book. Get into those things. Start making the calls. Hear what the different counties say. Make the distinctions. This county says one thing. The other county says something else. They're next door to each other, and they're completely different. Oh, I call these six counties. They all pretty much sound the same. Make the distinctions for your area. Right, they're all a little different, and then then understand which ones that that you want to buy in, and know what the reasons are. Right, and then send me the questions. Right, as you're doing that, you'll have questions that pop up. Send them to me. I'll answer those questions. That's what's going to make you a successful uh, investor. But before successful, we want to be safe. That's the whole point, right? It's all about safety first. Doing the due diligence, doing that, because my number one rule is 
don't lose your principal. And by doing this the right way, you will not only not lose your principal, right? You will not only uh, get um, you know huge returns, double-digit returns, but you will also get properties as long as you're doing this and you're doing it on a consistent basis. Having said that, guys, make sure uh, to to send me your questions. Okay, guys, see you next time.